Hello and welcome to Season 5 of the Club Series here on Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live. I'm Paul Smith, alongside me is Adam Bath with Samila Kummer on the cameras for you tonight. And we are here for uh, this latest round of the Championship and we are of course at the Mount Panorama Circuit in Australia, otherwise known as Bathurst. Uh, well, it is rounds 9 and 10 of the season, so the halfway mark of the championship. And what a challenging, awe-inspiring circuit it is that they're going to, to take part in here. And well, Adam, as I say, we're coming up to the halfway point of the season. And uh, this championship, we're starting to see the effects of drop scores here. And uh, it's still pretty close at the front. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to be close after the results of the next two race meetings. I think these uh, these two races in Australia, here at Bathurst this week and at Oran Park next week, are potentially season-defining race meetings. And yeah, uh, two circuits are going to provide a lot of action. And if you get the points here, then you're going to be in good shouts at the championship. It's going to be good two races, I think, tonight. Yeah, certainly. And, uh, well, just having a look at the that championship standings then, there's... Uh, the first six covered by just 66 points at the moment, so it uh, really is anybody's game so far in this championship. Yeah, let's run you through the championship standings then going into the halfway race meeting of the season. Diego Melro leads Matt Bunn by 26 points. Piers Pryor in third for Club 73 with Nitro Helmets. Ben Gregory in fourth. Michael Hall in fifth. Alex Everett, the privateer, doing well in sixth. Tom Stanley in seventh with... Chris Wood in 8th, Stuart McFadden in 9th, and Clinton Bell in 10th. Only 165 points separating the top 10. Over in the Tier 2 standings, Stuart McFadden leads Scott Malcolm by 9 points. Then 11 points behind him, it is Andrew Woodhouse. Then Max Wright in 4th, Flanagan 5th, 6th, Jason Rowe, Tristan Bodice in 7th, Mark Woodhouse 8th, uh, Sean Gardner 9th, and Perry Warburton in 10th. And over in the team standings, it is CQR leading Team Mad by 68 points with Club 73 with Nitro Helmets third, Automech Academy fourth, GVR in fifth, Radical Racing UK in sixth, GBR Brit Modeler in seventh, eighth Club 73 with Hive Hill Motorcycles, Team Dial Up ninth, Boosted Motorsports in tenth, Kunst Voller Subaru for you in eleventh, Isle of Base Automech in twelfth, GBR Too Old to Play thirteenth, and at the bottom it is Electric Motorsports. Yes, yeah, so that's the uh, standings as we are and. Um this circuit just to uh, to let people know it has just 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 the 23 corners here uh, but the uh, the thing is it's a it's a circuit of differences here you've got the high speed sections of the up the hill up the mountains straight and also down the Conrad straight as well that's your really high speed sections and then you're going up the mountain up through Griffin's Bend the cutting quarry corner Reed Park Sullivan Park McFinnamy Park and then when you get to the top of the mountain, Skyline, or Brock Skyline as it's known now, through the S's and down the Dipper into Forest Elbow, that section all the way up there, that is where drivers can make uh, make up so much time or lose so much time. Yeah, it is. And uh, since they've redone the Kia, it's very hard to control them over the top of the hill going through the S's. And this is where you're going to be making or breaking your time. And you want to stay... Uh, with the cars through that part of the course so you can get them on the uh, Conrod straight because uh, that flat out right hander into the chase is probably the, the most important overtaking spot on the circuit. Certainly is 174 metres elevation change as well in this one and the steepest gradient at one part which I believe is down through the dipper is 1 in 6.13 so uh, really steep section of the circuit and it's so difficult to control the car because you're having to brake so early because you've got gravity working against you so uh, we're going to see a few mistakes and the thing is if you make a mistake through there Adam you're going to be in a wall there's no doubt about it. Yeah, I think it's the closest thing we've got on iRacing to a street circuit, really. Concrete walls everywhere you look. And, yeah, we saw in the BSRTC a few weeks ago that, yeah, if you make a mistake in the S's, you are, you're going to be on your way to the wall and most likely severe damage as well because uh, you don't have much time to slow the car down if you make a mistake. Well, just in qualifying at the moment, and it is currently Matthew Bunn who is in provisional pole just uh, less than, well, just over one tenth of a second ahead of Pete Harrod, who of course is uh, come, is making a uh, little guest appearance for us this week here in the championship, a uh, season two and three champion. 
is uh, is returning for one week uh, as far as we're aware haven't heard if he's going to be planning on doing any more rounds of this championship but it's good to see pete back peter's prior currently sat in third with diogo melro fourth michael hall in fifth with adam hadfield sixth benjamin gregory of course a winner last time out in seventh place stephen baxter the privateer doing a very good job up in eighth place at the moment with andrew whitehead ninth and pete newman rounding out the top 10 of your grid so far but there is still three minutes to go here and uh, adam having somebody with the 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 caliber of pete harrod coming back into the championship okay it's a, a get you know a one-off spot as far as we're aware so far really does um step everybody's game up here at the front Oh yeah, P, uh, P. Harrod, the only two-time champion in the club series, uh, taken a year, a season out, but he should be back uh, next season. And, he, and straight away, he's jumped in second on the grid, and we've been seeing him in the pro series. He's a regular top ten finisher that now, there now. So he's definitely got the speed, and he's definitely got the experience in these Kia Optimus. He raced here, of course, the last time we were here at Bathurst. Got a win there in season two, one by eight seconds as well. So he knows how to get a win around here too. Yes, yeah, certainly does, and um, well, it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out, and uh, he's just starting a lap now, and a quick lap, he's got uh, a couple of the CQR boys in tow, of course, he's been working with the uh, the CQR Academy team in the Pro Series uh, during the showdown, which uh, only three weeks left of that, Adam, of the, uh, of the showdown, it's been uh, pretty enthralling racing, just to take a step aside for one moment to speak about that, because it's it's been always action-packed and thrilling racing. Oh yeah, it's been going since March, hasn't it? It's just been one long continuous season. It's finally coming to an end in three weeks. We've got Monza, the GP circuit, minus the first chicane. That's going to be interesting for you guys to negotiate. And then um, into Lagos, where we uh, saw how not to take uh, the Curva del Sol and the back straight uh, last week in the club series. And yeah, we'll be ending the season, as we always do, under the lights in uh, Daytona. But yeah, three in falling race meetings to go and that is 12 races and uh, yeah the champion will be crowned at the end of that and uh, yeah it's going to be pretty close of course you can always catch that Thursday night on BSR uh, on BSR TV, TV. Uh, <laughs> God, that's going back a while on Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live and that's uh, about uh, 20 past 8 isn't it in the evening of course the clocks have gone back as well so everybody's having to adjust to the uh, the clocks especially in the UK going back uh, so we're now back on GMT so uh, yeah about half past 8 is the first uh, 20 past 8 is, 8 is the first race uh, on a Thursday night so make sure you catch that on here but of course we're counting down towards the end of qualifying here with just uh, 45 seconds left I'm just having to look to see if there's anybody currently on the lap Matt Bun's just coming across to finish a lap here doesn't improve uh, in fact he's one and a half seconds slower than his fastest lap there uh, he's got Michael Hall in tow who didn't set a, uh, a lap time at last lap so they've just got one more lap to go on that one Diogo Melro just put in a lap there he's got up into second place on the uh, grid so uh, only uh, let's see he's very close it's 0 0.042 of a second behind Matt Bunn on the uh, the timing so uh, really good effort there from Diogo on that last lap uh, who else is coming to end a lap Pierce Pryor is going to come across the line here and the thing is he's going to see the checkered flag here Adam so he's just going to miss out on one more lap but will this be enough for him See what he does. It comes across the line now to 2 minute 10.759, just four hundredths of a second slower than his personal best. So he will remain in uh, fourth place. Uh, who else is coming across the line now? We've got, we've just had... Uh, Max Wright coming across. Yep, uh, Max Wright coming across the line. Uh, Stephen Baxter uh, just done a lap, which didn't improve him at all. Uh, Max Wright, yeah, he's just heading through the chase now towards the final corner. Personal best for him, 2 minute 12.477. Uh, wasn't able to beat that on his last lap, but check a flag for him. Across the line he will go. Will he improve on his 19th place to 10.377? And it moves him up a position into 18th. Andrew Whitehead, the next one then, coming into Murray's corner. Last corner, and that timeline comes at you quick there. Does he improve? The answer is no, he doesn't. And I'm uh, just seeing if anybody else is on a lap here. Jim Flanagan's got to come into the pits, so to his Dave Crozier. John Roberts he's coming down the uh comrade straight at the moment going into the chase i don't believe he's on a fast lap and in fact oh. he's lost control so <laughs> <laughs> just to confirm uh, matters 
So yeah, the last few people that have come across the line here, you've got Pete Harrod has been giving a tour to Matt Bun, but they both go off. Michael Hall though is going to stay on the lap here, and he can finish this lap now, so he's coming into Murray's for the final time in qualifying. Make sure you don't hit that kerb on the left hand side because it jumps the car up and unsettles it across the line he goes, and he does improve up into fourth place so uh, good work from uh, the cqr team there to get him moved up pete newman is coming across the line at the moment uh he improves and so too does sam reed as well uh i've just seen if that if that's everybody or not tristan bodis he's coming into murray's corner for the last time now he's been struggling so far today down in 32nd but will this improve him as he goes across the line? And the answer is... No. <laughs> it's quite simple, really. Dan Blake, he's got quite a battered car. He's obviously been having arguments with the wall there. Uh, but he's coming through in that 4X pacing car across the line here. I think he's just trying to set a lap time here, yeah, but he doesn't is. even do that. Yeah, Tristan Bodis, uh, yeah, he set a, he set, he improved his time, but just didn't improve his position. He'll stay in 32nd. A few penalties uh, to carry as, carry through as well. Jerome Kaiser, David Self, Rob Graham, and Ethan McColgan all haven't set a time in qualifying. Yeah, and that's everybody who set a lap time. So, uh, Adam, only 37 to go at this time. You're a little bit less than normal. Why don't you take us through the grid then? Okay, so we've got 37 courageous drivers willing to take on the mountain here. Let's have a look at the starting grid. Matt Byrne will start on pole position. Diogo Melro will start second. Pete Harrod third. Michael Hall fourth. Piers Pryor will start in fifth. Adam Hadfield in sixth. Seventh for Ben Gregory. Eighth for Stephen Baxter. Ninth for Pete Newman in tenth. Andrew Whitehead. Ian Roskill starts in eleventh for Chris Wood in twelfth. David White's thirteenth. Sam Reed fourteenth. Fifteenth for Jim Flanagan. Perry Warburton in sixteenth. 17th Clinton Bell, 18th Max Wright, 19th for Neil Rocks and Scott Malcolm will start in 20th place. 21st on the grid is John Roberts. Andrew Woodhouse starts in 22nd. It's been over two years now since his uh, win in the BSRTC at Montreal, just for pointing that out. Uh, Jason Rowe in 23rd, Mark Woodhouse in 24th, David Crozier in 25th, Sean Gardner 26th, Dale Green in 27th, 28th Lorne Murray. Lyndon Swervey in 29th, Chris Sherbin in 30th, 31st for James Leggett, 32nd will start Tristan Bodice and the cars that didn't set a time in qualifying, Sharon Kaiser 33rd, Dan Blake 34th, Rob Graham will start in 35th with David Self 36th and Ethan McColgan will start in 37th place. There we go, that is the grid then and we are getting set then for 20 minutes around this Mount Panorama circuit. Uh, hopefully everybody makes it through on lap one because there is always the potential for the disaster up over the top of the mountain uh, and we've got cars starting around the corner there uh, at the back of the grid so uh, it's not much of a fun place to start there uh, I can assure you of that but uh, the clock counting down here for the start of this race just waiting for three drivers here Adam and then we'll be all set it's going to be an interesting race one that's for sure yeah, these races at Bathurst are always action-packed, so expect to see a little bit of carnage going up the hill for the first time. And hopefully we don't have a traffic jam down at the cutting. Or up at the cutting, for that matter. Well, let's just say my finger is hovering over the uh, safety car button, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, drivers now getting set here. All patiently waiting for the last of... Uh, the drivers to come onto the grid, just waiting for Dan Blake. Trust Dan to be the one who's always the last one. Um, so here we go then. We're all set then for 20 minutes of the club series, season five of this championship, round nine. The red light comes on here, the drivers' anticipation rising. The green light is on. Away we go from the line then. It's going to be a good start from Matthew Bum, but Diego Melro gets a fantastic start on the outside. He's going to have the outside in towards turn one, Hell Corner, and he's going to carry that speed through there as well and take the lead in through turn one. Great start from Diogo there. Everybody else coming through the field now. Will they be able to make it towards uh, through turn one? Yes, they do. And it's the head up Mountain straight now. They're going towards Griffin's Bend, and this is going to be uh, one of the... Uh, early overtaking opportunities here on this opening lap and will they all manage to make it oh, no. through and the answer is no they don't because there is uh, Stephen Baxter in the wall 
Hopefully he keeps it out the way. Everybody else coming through there. And he does. He decides to take a tour back to the pit. So uh, we are able to carry on going. Lord Murray is... Uh, Sean Gardner, sorry, is turned around there. Um, just after Griffin's been along with Lord Murray as well. But uh, everybody else able to carry on. And still, Diogo Mauro. Great start from him, Adam, at the, uh, uh, to get off the line so well. And uh, to make that move stick around the outside. Yeah, he's just swooped around the outside of Matt Bunn there into the first corner, held corners. Stephen Baxter, I don't know what he expected Pete Newman to do, but you just can't move across the straight and expect the car to disappear. And uh, that's what happened to him. Pete Newman carries on, and yeah, Stephen Baxter has to retire back to the pits early on. We're heading through the skyline and S's section of the course for the first time, and then into the dipper. Oh, in the wall is tier two car, and I can't Jason get Rowe. It's Jason Rowe, and he's stuck there. So uh, that will put pay to his first race. He's back to the pits. Matt Bunn, oh, down the come one straight now. He's in the draft, he's in the slipstream. He's got his teammate behind him. And well, down the come one straight the go. And it's going to be going to the inside of the chase here. It's a risky move to make. You're going to be on the outside. Oh, no. oh, a little bit of rubbing there. In towards the uh, left-hander here at the exit of the chase. Oh, there's a car goes flying wide there. Who was that? That was Pierce Prayer who went flying off there at the exit of the chase and Bun and Melrose still side by side in towards Murray's corner but it's going to be Melrose who wants that late Bun clambers over on the curb there on the inside and at the end of lap one it's still got Melrose in the lead with Matt Bun second, Michael Hall third, Adam Hadfield up to fourth place ahead of Pete Harrod Benjamin Gregory is in sixth with Pierce Pryor, still holding on to seventh place then. Andrew Whitehead in position to eighth with Ian Roscoe ninth and Chris Wood rounding out the top ten. Yeah, Adam Hadfield and Pierce Pryor, they banged wheels on the entry of the chase and Pierce Pryor took to the gravel on the inside then jumped across onto the outside part of the circuit and was able to rejoin, of course, had to serve quite a bit of a slowdown. But yeah, action all the way through the field in the opening lap of the race. Diogo Melo just being able to hold on. They were stuck together almost going into the chase. Uh, for the first time and uh, yeah Melrose got a tough order on his hands to hold back these CQR guys only one lap in the books and around about 15 minutes or so to go so yeah so Andrew Woodhouse is in the pit so too is David South even McColgan uh, so there's a number of cars coming back to pits with very damaged looking vehicles James Leggett is another one uh, Dave Crozier there's, oh, there's a whole heap of cars back in the pits but it's this battle at the front that's really intriguing Matt Bone and Diogo Melro they're the real early pace setters for the championship here and they're the ones who are, who are trying you know, the fight out between them and Bone he's determined to get a much better result compared to last week because he had a bit of a disaster last week he said and uh, well here they are, still together as they head in towards Forest Elbow now. And it's all about getting the run out of that corner, carrying as much speed as he can. I think Bun got a better run there as well. Here he comes there, down the Conrad straight for the second time. Melro moving all over the place, trying to disturb the slipstream. He's moved to the inside. He wants that line, but now he's going to be able to move back across because Matt Bun hasn't got alongside. Matt Bun's going to try up the inside into the chase, just like he did on lap one of the race. Will Melro be able to lunge it back up the inside? They come close again. Matt Bun's trying to squeeze him out just a little bit there. On the brakes, as close. And they're going to be side by side towards the final corner. Once again, side by side going in towards Murray's. But Melro this time just sneaks it in front. Will Bun lunge down the inside? No, he won't. He holds it back. And these two fighting it out is holding everyone up behind them. Look at the queue that they've got behind them all the way down to Ben Gregory in sixth. So first to six, they're only covered by 1.6 seconds there, Adam. This is fantastic racing. Yeah, sort of similar racing we saw at Interlagos last week. Everyone so close together and we're seeing it again. And no one able to make a break here in the early going. Of course, the guys as well that were rejoining at the back. Because they've only got 37 cars here, these guys could all be in contention for a reverse grid pole. So don't rule them out of a good race too. But yeah, looking at this, we've got um, Diogo Melo all the way down to... Uh, who is it? We've got Ben Gregory at the back of this six-car train. Yep, we do. And, uh, well, there's uh, Piers Pryor catching up to the back of them as well. Uh, Andrew White had just a little bit of a gap between him, but side by side, Ian Roskell and Chris Woodward. Chris Wood out of control through the cutting. Good grief, he got done a bit of a handbrake turnaround there. Fantastic car control to keep it out the wall. <laughs> Do you know what? I've never seen anybody take that line through the cutting. That was absolutely amazing to see. Yeah, he, he lost it on entry, and I thought he was on his way to the wall there. But um, yeah, that was a fantastic job, and he, main, he maintained his position as well, stayed in 10. 
As you do oh, I heard a little bit of a contact with a wall up in your front group. And, uh, well, I couldn't see who it was. Everybody's still running for the time being in that front group. But uh, I think it might be Matt Bunn, actually, looking at his front right-hand corner. He looks to have a little bit of damage there. And he, I think he's the one who's clipped the wall. Yeah, I'm going to have a look back and see if that's what happened. It might uh, disturb the slipstream for him just a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, it was him on the entry into the uh, DSs at the top of the hill. And Chris Wood's in the wall again, at, uh, Paul. So after that heroics of the, the cutting on his way back down the hill, um, it all came tumbling down for him. Well, he's uh, maybe got a little bit of steering damage involved in that one as well, so the tracking may well be out there. But, um, yeah, he's uh, still in second place, is Bun. Uh, Pierce Pryor now, all clambering all over the back of Ben Gregory. Gets a better run out of the chase as they head down to Murray's Corner. And Gregory's going to squeeze Pryor there on the entry to Murray's Corner. But Pryor is going to Pryor is going to have the better exit there, better run. It's only a short run down to Hell Corner. So uh, these two battling it out there, and this is for 6th and 7th place. Uh, the leaders still hold in position as they were. Further down, there's battles. Look at the queue further down as well. Clinton Bill, Max Wright, Neil Rocks, John Roberts. They're all together there in a queue. That's 13th, 14th, 15th and 16th all battling away there. So battles all the way through the field and uh, we, uh, we had a high number of drivers going into the pits. Um, well, you've seen something there, Adam. Yeah, uh, Pierce Pryor and Ben Gregory, the battle continued up, up the hill, down the mountain straight and into the right hands that we saw in the BSR TC race. There is just no grip around that outside of turn two. And Pierce Pryor was very lucky to not to, av to avoid hitting the wall. There um, we are then. Oh. Yeah, go yeah, going up the hill. I thought you were just taking a drink there, Paul. So I thought see, I'll give you some time. Uh, but yeah, we're going up to the S's now. And uh, that's cut them adrift from the rest of the field now. So, P uh, so Pete Harris, the car that's on the back of this train it's now gone down to uh, five cars yeah they are as they head over skyline then through the s's clipping that curb on the left hugging the uh, walls now on each apex and bun is struggling a little bit it looked like through the left hander there at the at the uh, the dipper and as they're heading towards forest elbow he's going to really have to hug that uh, inside line Runs it right out to the wall there. Pete Harrod, in fact, just oh. raised the wall a little bit there on the exit of Forest Elba. And Pierce Pryor got it a bit even more than him, I think. He's now going to lose a position to the car behind, the car that's alongside, and that is uh, Andrew Whitehead. Whitehead's going to get the position. We'll see if Pierce Pryor can fight back, but yeah, that's what happens if you hit the wall. Yeah, the walls are unforgiving. Speaking of unforgiving walls, Dale Green and Chris Sherburn, they've come together. Uh, where on earth is that? That's, um, oh, through the dipper. Dale Green hits the wall in the dipper and Chris Sherburn crashed in avoidance. So, uh, disaster for those two. They are still trying to get going again. Oh, oh. and it's a bit of a disaster oh for them word. indeed. Crash uh, at the final corner and it happened dramatically, Paul. It was Andrew Whitehead and Piers Pryor. I don't know if you can have a look at this back on the replay. We had it uh, on live, but, uh, yeah, Whitehead and Pryor were... To, uh, we're getting stuck together and then Whitehead goes for a right tumble down the inside there. Yeah, he tried to squeeze him a little bit too much and uh, yeah, that was it through uh, and uh, well, Whitehead ends up losing a ton of positions down to 16th now with a very battered car. He may be worth pitting at the end of this lap and we're coming up to the halfway point of this race by the way and the leaders are catching up to lap traffic. Uh, so this is traffic that's been in the pits. Jason Rowe, of course, who we saw in the wall and had to take a tow earlier on in this race. So the leaders are catching up to Jason here and, uh, well, they don't want to catch up to him at the wrong point of the track, i.e. over the top of the mountain, because really there's no overtaking opportunities over the top here. Yeah, it's pretty much single file from this moment on is where they're going through now. Or towards McFinley Park in the skyline and then S's. Melro running a bit of a wide line through there. And he might be under pressure from Matt Bunn. Matt, don't do anything stupid through the S's. Side by side through there is not a good idea. Oh Gets my goodness. Oh my god, that's Jason Rowe. <laughs> yeah, obviously lost control in skyline and luckily was offline there because if he wasn't, he would have been collected by this gaggle of cars. So uh, luckily for everyone there, Jason Rowe. Uh, managed to uh, keep it out of the way. Matt Bunn taking a very wide line through Forest Elbow, and that's going to allow his teammate Michael Hall to come up alongside. And uh, Diogo Melro, if these two are going to battle it out, that's going to allow him to pull away. He's eight tenths of a second ahead at the moment. 
Matt Bond needs to just slot in behind his teammate. He doesn't need to go side by side through the chase here because it's going to slow each other down, but that's what they're going to do. And Bun holds on to the position for the time being. Hall just slotted in behind and look at that behind. Adam Hadfield under pressure from Pete Harrod and Harrod makes the move through now. Yeah, so that's Harrod up to fourth place. Don't know whether uh, Matt Bunn knew that he was the quicker of the two CQR drivers, so he was determined to maintain that second place. He wants to make sure he can get onto the back of Diogo Melo, as he has been doing so far in this opening race of the day. We come across the line to start lap six of the race now, over half the race gone. And yeah, it's really as you were. However, Pete Harrod is up into fourth place now. Certainly is. And uh, well, it's, it's really good racing as this up at the front. There's good racing going on further down as well. Good to see David White up in ninth place at the moment. We'll run you through your top ten. Since we are past the halfway point, it's Diogo Melo in first with Matt Bunn second. Michael Hall third with Pete Harrod in fourth now ahead of Adam Hadfield. Ben Gregory in sixth, Pierce Pryor seventh, Ian Roskell eighth. As I say, David White up into ninth place there with Jim Flanagan. Another good position so far for him into tenth place. And I can tell you at the moment, there's only 29 cars running. And the reverse grid wheel goes down to 32, so uh, I don't know how that one's going to work, but uh, we'll see, we'll, think, we'll worry about that when we get to it. But uh, yeah, there's, um, there's been a, a high attrition rate here today, Adam. Yeah, um, we could have more to come. Yeah, David Self's the last running car in 30th. Dale Green and Lorne Murray are both shown as one lap down and in the pits. So that's definitely not what you want. Uh, Lyndon Swaby's in the pits as well. Something's happened to him on this lap. Uh, he was running in 24th place. Uh, but yeah, something's gone wrong for him and yeah, he's back in the pits. I think it's safe to say that I can predict he's been in a wall. And speaking of people uh, running into walls, David White, I've been praising him about his uh, run. Went wide through the left-hander before uh, the uh, before Skyline McFinnamy Park and into the wall there. He went over the kerbs and into the wall. Hopefully he hasn't got too much damage on that car. He's got about 3.8 seconds ahead of Perry Warburton. So hopefully for, uh, for David, he can uh, hold on to that top 10 position. Yeah, because uh, he's doing brilliantly so far inside the top 10. David White, and yeah, he's quite far ahead of Perry Warburton, who's had a good race. He started in 16th place up to 11th. Uh, some other big movers, 21st to 14th for John Roberts, closing in on uh, the car in front of him, which is Neil Rocks, who was involved in that huge incident at Interlagos last week. Looking up the inside is John Roberts, actually. Oh, that's oh. close. Contact oh, made. it was a little too close. That's what it was. But John Roberts has got the inside going towards Murray's corner. Will he make the job? Will he get the job done, Adam? Let's have a look into the final corner. He doesn't want to do what his teammate did a few laps ago and bounce across the inside. And he is through. So that is John Roberts into 13th place. The boosted driver then moving ahead of the... Uh, uh, it was gone broke racing, I do believe it is. Uh, no, too old to play team, sorry, uh, for uh, Neil Rocks. So that's a change of position between those two. The front guys, they're still saying as they were. Uh, uh, so uh, the top five still as they were, top six still as they were there. Piers Pryor is starting to put pressure on Ben Gregory once again. And oh, Pryor running a little bit wide going into the cutting. He's trying everything he can to uh, to get as much time out of this car, and it's around about now that these drivers will really be starting to struggle with those front tyres, Adam. Yeah, uh, air temperature today, 74 degrees Fahrenheit, track temperature 94. Relatively warm day here in New South Wales, Australia. And going up the hill, uh, there's a battle going on between Perry Warburton and Max Wright. This is for 11th and 12th, the team dial-up car and also back Academy very, very close. Warburton sliding out wide. I don't know whether he hit the wall at all there. Might have just grazed it, but uh, the team dial-up car, who's doing pretty well, considering a tier two driver as well, is just on the fringes of the top 10. Doing, doing well here. Matt Bunn once again in the slipstream of Diogo Melro. They've got a lot of traffic ahead of them again. And this is the thing with uh, David South, then it is, that they're catching up to at the moment as they go down the uh, Comrod straight in towards the chase here. And uh, Pete Pryor, uh, sorry Pete Pryor, Pete Harrod having to go defensive here going into the chase. Able to hold on to position for the time being, but Adam Hadfield was looking very racy then uh, to try and make the move on uh, Pete, but Pete able to hold on to that position as he runs over the grass there. And uh, the, the thing about this track is, it's very hard to pick up instant points here. 
So so far, everybody is still running in this race. That have that you know, not in terms of disqualification. Pete Harrod is going to lose his position here to Adam Hadfield to go down into Hell Corner. Harrod, you can hang it out right wide around the outside there, and that if you carry the speed there, he gets that run. And Harrod showing just as Melrose did at the start of this race, he can hang it out around the outside and carry the speed there into Mountain Straight. Yeah, interesting to see that. Uh, yeah, the outside has got a ton of grip, it looks like. And yeah, Pete Harris, who looked like he was going to have to concede the uh, fourth place to Adam Hadfield, has uh, got it back. So Adam Hadfield is, and those two, while they're battling away, are losing touch with the cars at the front. In the background, Piers Pryor trying to get past Ben Gregory. That looks very close as well, going up towards the cutting. This is over sixth and seven. Perry Warburton into the pits now. Uh, oh. he's, having, he's having to take repairs from that to Grace. And look at that, Piers Pryor down the inside. I've never seen anybody make a move on the exit of the cutting. And he's trying his best, but Ben Gregory, fair credit to him, didn't panic there. Held on to the position, but that was, that was really ambitious there from Piers. Yeah, not often you see that. Usually once we begin our climb up the mountain, you don't ex expect to see any positions changed. But yeah, Piers Pryor was going for it. The CV is going to try and he moves into the S's. Well, be very careful you don't run into the car in front or hit the wall for that matter. Now into the dipper and on our way towards Forest Elbow, these two battling over 6th and 7th, two different teams, GVR there and uh, Club 73. Oh, so close hitting the wall there, they, Piers Pryor. Matt Bunn is really close at the front. They, they caught the uh, lap traffic in the mountain section. Diogo Melrose weaving down the straight. It's a little bit unsporting of him and you can see that the countdown of the clock is down to two and three quarter minutes and Bunn is going to make the look down the inside into the chase Will and Robert all no they won't they keep it clean and he's going to be on that outside line he's trying to get the cut back here possibly try and get the run in towards Murray's corner but Melro and Bunn they all caught that traffic at the worst point down the down the hill section oh, and contact he's bang into the back of Melro there Melro keeps his lead but uh, 2 minutes 20 as they go across the line, I think we're going to get another two laps of this, Adam. Yeah, 2 minutes 10 laps they're doing, well, 2 minutes 13 in race trim. Uh, so we should have another lap's worth of competition after this one. So two more opportunities in, for, into the chase for Matt Bunn to try and take this lead away from Diego Melro. Yeah, Melro's helped this all the time since Term 1 of uh, this race. And uh, really, it's Melro who's uh, the one under pressure. He uh, he's really showing why he is the current reigning champion, and uh, Bun he's desperate to win this uh, win this championship this season. And you could tell by the, the the driving that he's been putting on display this week, uh, this season should I say? And uh, it certainly is. He's got he's a man on the mission here, and he's trying his best. Look at how much he's how close he's getting to the walls there. He's getting every ounce of time, every every new millisecond out this car but Diogo he's the man in the place he can place his car where he wants Adam. Yeah and just going through McFinley Park there you can hear the tyres squealing it's a very tough corner in these Kia Optimus especially after you've been racing for 17 minutes or so and the car is at its limit in terms of tyre life going through the dipper Diogo Melro wasn't too good through there just on this lap so Matt Bunn has closed in again let's see what they're like going into Forest Elbow running it so close to the wall there we've seen so far tonight Matt Bunn always gets a good run out of the Forest Elbow and he's got, uh, they've got another one as well now here we go then we're heading down towards the closing stages of this race and Melro once again weaving down the uh, Comrade Strait again really don't think when they're that close he should be weaving that much but he is doing that and he's pushing the limits off the regulations to the limit here and through the chase it goes Matt Bond going to look to the inside Melro holds that inside line Gale's defensive there it's compromising his line through the chase here but he's holding on to the position as they're coming in towards Murray's for the penultimate time because we're going to get one more lap of this Adam and Bunn's going for an into Murray's he's making oh. a move over the curb and Bjorn Melro holding that line on the outside again carrying the speed so this is it the last lap one more opportunity for Matt Bunn to take the lead but uh, Michael Hall his teammate behind he's, uh, he's ready to pounce and what's great about this, we can have five different drivers all have a shot at winning this race here on the final lap of the race. 3.86 miles left for these drivers to try and take the win down the mountain straight then for the final time. And up towards turn two, Griffin's Bend, Melrose already covering the inside line, moves back across 
to the racing line. Matt Bunn having another look at the inside there. And what we did see going into oh. the final corner is that these Kia Optimus do take a bit of a battering without having to go off the track. The, and Matt Bunn's close. They're catching up to uh, Lyndon Swerve as well. So uh, a bit of lap traffic could get involved in this one towards the end. And Matt Bunn, it was so much better through turn two, through uh, Griffin's Bend. And... Uh, Melrose, he's letting the back end hang out a little bit, so it looks like maybe he's worked his tyres a little bit more, he's pushing that a little bit harder, and Bun then as they come through these uh, sweeping left-handers through McFinnery Park here, of that crest, down into the compression there through that left-hander, and now you're going to head over Skyline here, this right-hander, and then through the S's here, left, Right, then into the dipper now. Just look at how this drud just drops off here through the dipper. You've got another right there, then another left into the right again before Forest Elbow. And Bun, oh, oh he's, he's him. giving him contact. He's pushed him wide. Melrose into the wall. Bun will take the lead. And, well, Michael Hall, he was ready to pounce there. He couldn't make it, though, but now he is. He's going to go alongside here, Adam, as they're going down this Comrade Strait. A oh, bump and run there by Matt Bunn, and now here comes Michael Hall to take the second place away going into the chase. Could this be a CQR 1-2? Be careful guys, oh! they're rubbing, 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 rubbing! And they've got two wide behind them as well! Melrose is going to end up third, is he? Look at how late Melrose is on the brakes there! Going into the chase, Michael Hall! And oh, he's Bunn. getting the lead! I bet Bunn's letting him pass, I bet it because that bump and run is letting him pass here! Oh, I'm being sporting if he is! And well, into the final corner, it's going to be Melrose. Michael Hall, he's going pumping with his teammate. Who's going to have the place across the line? But it is Diogo Melrose who wins this one. My Matthew Bunn ends up in second place with Michael Hall in third, Pete Harrod in fourth, with Adam Hadfield only just in fifth place. What racing there! And I tell you what, in a championship that's pretty close, for somebody to give the position back after the bump and run. You've got to take your hat off to Matt Bunn there. Oh well, yeah, looking at the championship, Matt Bunn and Diego Melrose, they're the two guys at the top of the championship, and I thought oh, you take anything to try and get an advantage over the guy you're fighting for the championship there, but credit to Matt Bunn. He had quite a bit of an advantage as well, but he lifted off and gave the position back to Diego Melrose going into the final corner, and Melrose takes the win. Top five, separated by eight tenths of a second. Perry Warburton is battling with Rob Graham, and considering that Perry Warburton's had his car repaired once, that tell you look at the front end of that car, that tells you he's been in another wall. Uh, but anyway, Rob Graham and Perry Warburton then, this is over 21st and 22nd as they're heading towards Murray's once again. Rob Graham is going to hold that inside line, and you would think that he's going to hold on to that 21st place. Through the left-hander they go, and uh, Perry Warburton trying to get the cut back there, but it's not quick enough because that time in line comes at you proud of a quick there, and he ends up taking uh, 21st as Rob Graham. Uh, Andrew Woodhouse, by the way, comes across the line in 23rd. Sean Gardner, well, the Sean Gardner and Matt Woodhouse still in the chase at the moment. Oh. They're going to be the last of the lead lap runners. Uh, we, had a, we, we had a crash on the final lap, Paul, and it was between Max Wright and, uh, who's that, David White. This was about 10th and 11th position going into the chase. Max Wright gets uh, hit up the back by John Roberts, who then gets sent into David uh, White. Oh, not David. And they're both in the wall. But I think White's able to continue. He finishes 11th. Unfortunately for Max Wright, he was finished in the pits in 26th. Oh, disaster for Max Wright. He was having a real good race. So too was David White. And uh, yeah, Max was caught up in that wall, so he couldn't get out of there. And David White, with damage on his car after the incident, uh, as you say, was able to finish in 11th place. But uh, really good run from David. He was in the top 10 for a little while. But yeah, finishes in that 11th place. And we could tell you that uh, the lead lap runners have now finished. So, uh, Adam, why don't you take us through the final standings then? Okay, so Diego, Diego Mello takes the win, half a second ahead of Matt Bunn in the end, uh, with Michael Hall just nine hundredths of a second behind his CQR teammate. Pete Harrow takes fourth position, former CQR driver, of course, and Adam Hadfield in fifth, top five separated by eight tenths of a second. Piers Pryor and Ben Gregory drops off the back of that top five in the end and finished in sixth and seventh, respectively. Ian Roskell in 8th, ninth for Jim Flanagan and John Roberts bashing his way through to 10th place on that final lap. David White limped across the line in 11th place, Ed Neil Rocks in 12th, Clinton Bell finished in 13th with Scott Malcolm in 14th, Andrew Whitehead 
uh, after having to take that battering in that battle with Piers Pryor finished in uh, 15th place. With Jerome Kaiser 16th, Tristan Bodice in 17th, Dan Blake working his way through from 34th on the grid to 18th, Pete Newman in 19th and 20th for Sam Reed. Pete Newman losing 10 positions during that race. 21st for Rob Graham, 22nd Perry Warburton just ahead of his teammate Andrew Woodhouse in 23rd, 24th for Sean Gardner, Mark Woodhouse in 25th, Linton Swaby in 26th and in the cars that were one lap down or more. Max Wright, David Self and Chris Sherburn all one lap down, David Crozier two laps down, and then six laps down Dale Green along with Lorne Murray, Chris Wood and Jason Rowe and then Ethan McColgan, James Leggett and Stephen Baxter all seven laps down. Yep, yeah, so that is your results then and uh, while, we were, while you were going through that grid I have found out, I've had a quick chat with uh, one of the admins and uh, because only 29 cars finished point scorers effectively it will be only down to 29. Anything higher than 29 for the reverse grid will be a full reverse grid. So basically, if you're in that 20, uh, 29th place, you're in the you're in the hot seat there. You've got more chances than everybody else. Well, well done, uh, Chris Sherburn. Then you're, you've got three chances of being on pole position here. In fact, four, is it four, including 29? So uh, yeah. yeah, you're going to be in for luck uh, for a bit of luck here. We'll run you through the contenders anyway. Uh, Rob Graham, 20, 21 down to 32 on a normal occasion, by the way. Uh, Rob Graham, Perry Warburton, Andrew Woodhouse, Sean Gardner, Mark Woodhouse, Lyndon Swaby, Max Wright, David White, Chris Sherburn, Chris Sherburn, Chris Sherburn, and uh, Chris <laughs> Sherburn as well. Uh, so <laughs> over to Samuli Kubo, a man on the cameras, and we'll find out who's on pole position for round 10 of the club series. I, I'm going to predict it's not going to be Chris Sherburn. Oh, it would just be his luck, wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> well, the wheel's spinning. And it's 23, and it's Andrew Woodhouse's lucky day. He's on pole position with his teammate, Perry Warburton, starting in second, Rob Graham in third, Sam Reed in fourth, and Pete Newman in fifth. Well, we've had Apex Racing TV commentators win here in the past. Uh, we could have one again here. Uh, can I just say, for, for the record, I didn't bring that up that time. Um, <laughs> so, what is it? So that was uh, round nine of the championship, and... Uh, well, we're just going to step aside for a few moments while we get the second race ready. So make sure you stay tuned for that reverse grid race. It always produces some thrills and spills, does the second race of the evening here in Season 5 of the Club Series on Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live. Don't go anywhere, but we'll be right back.
iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car. in the outside contact made 56 slides in and a four who's oh, gonna be a destroy dead even give it to ryan truex truex is your winner over tandy
iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed Welcome back to Season 5 of the Club Series here on Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live. Paul Smith, Adam Bath, Samila Kamur here bringing you all the action. This is Round 10 of the Championship, so the halfway point of the season. And, uh, well, Adam, we saw how close the racing could be at the front there with the top five covered by eight tenths of a second. I say more of that, please. Yeah, definitely. Maybe add a few more cars to it as well. And with the reverse grid, 23 cars being reversed, uh, yeah, we could see a whole load of action on the first lap of the race and for the uh, preceding 20 minutes. Yeah, certainly could. And, uh, well, we saw a high number of, of drivers not actually getting to the end there. 37 started the uh, race last time. Only 29 actually finished uh, the race. So it is a high attrition rate here. And uh, with the walls being so close here, it could give somebody who doesn't normally say have the opportunity of getting a win in in one of these events if they're starting up near the front it could give them the opportunity to get that win yeah if you negotiate the first few laps safely and cleanly uh, you should be on your way to winning the race and um, in some cases if there's a crash near the front uh, you might have a good few seconds in the bag and be able to use that to hold on for the rest of the race uh, of course that happened to uh, someone uh, that I might know but um, we'll see what Andrew Woodhouse can do uh, here in on pole position. It's been a while since he uh, won a race. Uh, he won a race back at Brands Hatch a few seasons ago in the club series, back in season four. And uh, at one point, he was leading the championship. It's far cry from that now, but uh, he could add another win to his roster in this second race. Was that the race where he went a bit all ranty in the interview room afterwards? Uh, yeah, well, yeah well, not often <laughs> we see drivers unhappy with the race win, but, um, but yeah. Yeah, that was, that was what happened there. Not too happy with Jim Flanagan, I remember, but that's what happened at Brands Hatch. Okay, well, before we uh, actually take you into the grid, we've got a few things we have to uh, just run through here. So, in the second race, there are back-of-grid penalties for Jeroen Kaiser and Rob Graham and David South, uh, from instance in previous event. Uh, and then there are 10 place grid penalties for Sam Reed, Lyndon Swaby, and Stephen Baxter as well. Uh, so, uh, you yeah, know, number of so that's what six drivers there are all going to be starting further down the grid than where they would have been. And that's really going to affect them in this race and their opportunities of getting a good result here, Adam. It's definitely going to impact them. Uh, yeah, those back of the grids, especially those that had back of the grids for the first race and the second race. So just after they've done a whole lot of hard work to get towards uh, a respectable finishing position, they've got to go and do it all again. And it will hamper their championship as well. And you can pretty, they can pretty much count this race meeting as uh, one for the drop scores, I reckon. And try and focus on getting the best result possible at Oran Park next week. Yeah, well, that's it. We're two Australian rounds here. So... Um... You know, it's, it's really uh, an Antipodean sort of feel to it, uh, this part of the championship here. So, uh, interesting to see how drivers cope with uh, going from this track, which is pretty high speed, to Oran Park next week. But we'll discuss that at the end of, uh, at the, end of the race, because right now we're uh, getting ready for the starting grid. And so Adam will take us through the uh, starting grid now. Okay, here's the grid then. On pole position, it is Andrew Woodhouse. His team dial-up teammate Perry Warburton will be starting alongside him on the front row. Ben Pete Newman's in third with Dan Blake in fourth. Tristan Bodis in fifth. Andrew Whitehead in sixth. Scott Malcolm in seventh. Clinton Bell eighth. Neil Rocks ninth. And David White in tenth. Eleventh, John Roberts. Twelfth, it is Ian Roskell. Thirteenth, Ben Gregory. Fourteenth, Piers Pryor. Fifteenth, Adam Hadfield. Sixteenth, Pete Harrod. Seventeenth, Michael Hall. Eighteenth, Mike. Eighteenth, Pete Sam Reed. Nineteenth, Matt Bunn. And twentieth, Diogo Melro. 21st for Sean Gardner, 22nd Mark Woodhouse, 23rd Max Wright, 24th is Jim Flanagan, 25th Chris Sherburn, 26th Dale Green, 27th Lorne Murray, 28th Chris Wood, 29th Jason Rowe and 30th Lyndon Swaby, James Leggett, 31st, 32nd Stephen Baxter, 33rd Rob Graham, 34th David South and starting at the back of the grid for the second time tonight it is Jerome Kaiser. So then all set for another 20 minutes around Mount Panorama. Uh, in the club series round 10 is all set here the engine up will rise here the drivers look into the gantry the red light is on 
The green light is on. Away we go from the start then. And it is a good start from Andrew Woodhouse on pole position. His teammate Perry Warburton not getting a good restart here. And Pete Newman having to take avoiding action. And in fact, it's going to be Perry Warburton who runs it round the outside. And Pete Newman will follow him. And Pete will be challenging all the way up Mountain Straight to possibly get the lead of this one as they're heading towards Griffin's Bend. And, uh, well, a disastrous start for Andrew Woodhouse. We've been chatting to us saying that he wasn't confident about his chances here. But Pete Newman, he's just sneaking ahead in towards Griffin's Bend, and he takes the lead. They great start, third to first. What a fantastic start to the race for him. Yeah, brilliant start. And yeah, we were chatting to Andrew Woodhouse about the outside manoeuvre, and it happened to him there second time tonight to the pole sitter. And yeah, he's dropped to third position. Pete Newman, experienced Kia driver, he's trying to make the gap already. Now we're heading through the cutting. Is there going to be any traffic jams here? There was one car that was brushing the wall. It was a GVR car. It might have been Ben Gregory. Oh, I'm hearing the contact with walls, but everybody seeming to be able to get through there. So at the front at the moment it is. Oh, well, actually, there's Piers Pryor and Adam Hadfield going side by side. Uh, I'll go to the front in a minute because those two have been battling away and Pryor getting ahead there then as they go over the top of the mountain. Pick Newman in the lead ahead of Perry Warburton. Andrew Woodhouse is in third with Dan Blake, another one of our colleagues in fourth place. Clinton Bell has had an incident. He's around at the... The, uh, the S is there. He's lost control there. Uh, it looks like all on his own as well. Yeah, just lost the back end into the wall. And that's him around. And so is James Leggett as well. So uh, a couple of people coming foul of uh, the uh, skyline. But look at that lead that Pete Newman's already got. 2.7 seconds. He's broken the draft, Adam. Yeah, and that's what everyone wants to do because uh, it really keeps the whole field together. That slipstream, Dan Blake trying to take a position away from Andrew Woodhouse going into the chase. And Blake's off. He's off in a massive way. Is he going to stop the car? He's going to have to come back and join the circuit. He's able to get regain control. Or is he? No, he's not. He's back in the gravel again. He's off, he's off, he's on and he's off again, but he's back go up, going in the right direction. That's the main thing, and he's kept it out of the way of everybody else. He'll have a killer of a slowdown penalty there as well. Right, it's Diogo Melro making a move there. That's on uh, David White, who had such a good first race. There's somebody in the pits as well at the moment, dropping down the order. It's Ben Gregory, who's got a heavy amount of damage on the front of his car. So at the, at the end of the first lap then, Pete Newman ahead of Perry Warburton. Tristan Bodice now up into third place. Andrew Whitehead is going past Andrew Woodhouse here. The two uh, AWs battling it out. They're going over the uh, the crest there and mounted, uh, mounted straight into Griffin's Bend. And it's now Scott Malcolm who's going to be challenging Andrew Woodhouse around the outside of Griffin's Bend. But Woodhouse now getting the run on Tristan and uh, trying to go side by side with him but can't make it. So it's Andrew Whitehead in third, Tristan Bonnet in fourth, Andrew Woodhouse in fifth, Scott Malcolm sixth, Neil Rock seventh, and John Roberts eighth with Pete Harrod ninth and Piers Pryor in tenth place, Adam. Yes, Andrew Woodhouse dropping almost like a stone at the moment. Uh, Andrew Whitehead's able to get by Scott Malcolm as the next car, but um, problem for oh, John Roberts was taking a very unconventional line on the exit of the cutting. I thought he might have had a problem, but uh, he's carrying on. He was in, he's in eighth place. Uh, yeah, and everyone really bunched together apart from at the front where Pete Newman's on his way. Perry Warburton's got a bit of an advantage over Andrew Whitehead, who's now the new third place guy. Uh, Tristan Bodice wrestling with the car there through uh, the S's and into the cutting. Everyone else all virtually nose to tail. Oh, we've had an instant at the top of the hill. Your own Kaiser is involved there. And oh, somebody else off, and that's a big one. Swaby and Green, I believe it was, that have gone off over the, over the wall there. But it was originally your own Kaiser who made the move down the inside oh. of... I can't see who that was that he went down the inside. It was Jason Rowe. And, uh, yeah, around the went there, and uh, there was a big contact afterwards. And there's a, there was a whole load of cars off at the cutting as well. Mark Whithouse is still there trying to uh, get the car pointed the right way. And that was all the resource of contact at the top of the hill. Oh, sorry, on the way down the hill through the S's Benz as well. So problems for Kaiser and plenty of other drivers involved in other various incidents on lap two as well. Well, I can tell you Pete Harrods, one making moves here. He's looking down the inside and Neil rocks into Murray's corner. Rocks are holding it around the outside. And that seems to be a feature of that, that last corner and the first corner, hell corner. You're able to hold that outside line and carry the speed through there. And uh, it makes it really difficult to, to make a move down the inside, Adam. That's it, yeah. And, and we've been seeing so far tonight, the outside, the outside is working so well around turn one. 
Um, it's almost being a hindrance to be on the outside. John Roberts had some issues. He might have had picked up a slowdown. He's lost a ton of positions. He's now down to 15. Uh, so problems for that boosted motorsports car. And uh, Pete Howard trying to get past uh, Neil Rocks up to the top of the hill. Yeah, and he can't make the, get the job done. And Piers Pryor now putting the pressure on him. Adam Hadfield's putting the pressure on Piers Pryor as well. So real battling going on here. Eighth, ninth and tenth place uh, there between those guys with Neil Rocks just in front of them as well. Going through the cutting there, able to keep going. But I'll tell you what, Perry Warburton and uh, Andrew White, uh, I'm sorry, and Pete Newman, they've got big gaps between them and also between Perry Warburton and Andrew Whitehead as well and Andrew Whitehead is under a little bit of pressure from uh, Tristan Bodice at the moment but uh, not really making any attacking moves at the moment but uh, those front two they're in a very good position so far yeah Pete Newman on his way he last time around at the line he was three seconds ahead and then Perry Warburton yeah he's got almost a uh, two second lead over Andrew Whitehead so uh, both of them doing relatively well. Andrew White will be doing his utmost to try and close the gap. Last time around, uh, Whitehead was still slower than Warburton, so he's going to have to get a move on. We're on lap three of the race, and already less uh, than 15 minutes to go here. It's all pretty spread out inside the top five. Relative gaps there. Howard, Pete Harrod's trying to get oh. past Neil Rocks this time. That's close. Yeah, it is very close. Rocks and uh, Harrod, though, giving each other room. Harrod running it oh. out on the outside. No. Oh. No, oh, no, no, there's big, big contact oh. going to happen here. And, well, that was asking for trouble there. Piers Pryor has uh, been involved in that one along with Rocks. Adam Hadfield, though, the big, big gainer out of that one. He's made it through past them all there. And Piers Pryor still getting involved and into the wall. Around he goes. There's a couple other cars getting caught up in that one as well. Max Wright and Neil Rocks involved in that one. Uh, that's a disastrous time for Piers Pryor, and he's taken a tour back to the pits. Just as I was about to say that uh, those two had just managed to save it from being a huge incident. Yeah, Piers Pryor ha ha is involved in a secondary collision after I, I what happened. I think he had uh, rear suspension damage. Yeah, it's a new, it's a new I update for these key optimists that the steering can be easily broken. And yeah, that, I wouldn't surprise me if that's what happened to Piers Pryor. It's almost as if a track rod has gone or something like that. But anyway... Um, Away they go up the hill still, and Pete Harrod now, he's got and Adam Hadfield to contend with now. So, uh, well, he made it past one driver, but the only problem is he's got to make it past another one, one here. As, oh, we've got people almost brushing the wall as well. Andrew Woodhouse trying to get past Tristan Bodice. He's all of a sudden decided to ass try and ascend the order. Tristan Bodice looks like he's got back on the pace again, but the team dial-up car was uh, trying to go around the outside there at the cutting. So far, it's a good race for team dial-up as well, isn't it? Yeah, two of two of their drivers inside uh, the top five, and both of them uh, tier two drivers as well. So this will be uh, doing wonders for their championship. Just checking that Perry Warburton is a tier two driver. Yes, he is. Uh, Perry Warburton sitting tenth in the tier two standings. Andrew Woodhouse sitting in third going into this race meeting. And Tristan Bodice as well as a tier two driver. So he's uh, getting involved in this one. Woodhouse taking the tighter line through. Forest Elbow and uh, down the Comrade straight they go once again and uh, really this is going to be a challenge here as Stephen Baxter now has gone to the pits he's taken a tour he had a crash at Skyline clipped the wall on the inside at Skyline and has luckily managed to keep it out the way but look at this down through the chase and it's Adam Hadfield and Scott Malcolm and Malcolm's going to lose the position is he he's getting pushed a little bit wide by Hadfield but they're going to go side by side but it's going to be Hadfield that has the inside line. Oh. Pete, oh Pete Harrod almost getting turned there by Michael Hall. Matthew Bond coming down the inside into Murray's corner. Harrod takes the place from Malcolm and Hall manages to hold on to the place from Bond and here comes Diogo Melro now. The two protagonists from race one and uh, Melro and Ma uh, Matthew Bond battling it out into turn one and Scott Malcolm Taking it, getting it really slow through to one. Oh, Bun and Malcolm rubbing doors there as they're going up mountain straight here. And Melro is just having to sit behind. And in fact, Malcolm's letting them by here. Yeah, and, and Pete Harrod's trying to get past Hadfield up to the top of the hill. Malcolm do it. Uh, sorry, Matt Bun doing what uh, Diogo Melro is doing to him, moving across down the straight. And now Michael Hall's trying to get past Pete Harrod, the two-time champion, of course. And they're at it again. They were doing it at the front in race one. They're now all squabbling over positions just uh, in the lower regions of the top ten. 
Yeah, certainly are Ben Gregory making a move around the outside of Griffin's Bend on Chris Sherburn and gets that job done there. Jason Rowe swapping positions with uh, J Chris Wood here as they head into the cutting. Chris Wood having a nightmare of a round here this week. So uh, Chris is really struggling today. But, uh, oh, I heard a crash. And it's Andrew White. It yeah, is. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, well, third place man, he's out at Skyline. He'd lost it away before that. He hit the inside wall pull on the entry into the cup. Like, it was the wall on the outside, sorry. I've never seen... How on earth does that happen? I really don't know, but he's hit the wall, lost control, and then into the wall, and yeah, that's his race done and dusted. He's just done and dusted. See what I did there? Oh, uh, very, he... very good. <laughs> As he gets back up and running again, he'll take it back to the pits if he can. Chris Sherburn has just crashed as well. Oh, it's, it's all happening now. It's We're getting to the point in the race where people are just starting to lose control of the car. The tyres are starting to just wear out a little bit. Of course, these uh, these tyres, though, they will be a little bit better than in that first race because the track temperature is a little bit cooler, 81 degrees Fahrenheit. We are in the late afternoon here, so uh, that's why you have that uh, stunning golden uh, look to the uh, the lighting here. But, yeah, that, that cooler temperature is just catching people out here, Adam. Yeah, it is. And, uh, oh, oh, and change, or oh, oh, possibly clash between the CQR cars for a second there, but uh, they thought better of it. But, yeah, these cooler conditions, it means the drivers can push the cars just a little bit uh, harder. Tr the t t track temperature's gone down a bit from the 94 degrees which we were seeing in the first race. Melro now trying to take the position away from Matt Bunn. He tried it around the outside earlier on in race one. He's going to try it around the outside of turn two here into Griffin's Bend. Yeah, you can try that, but it's a very difficult move to make. So uh, he slots in behind Bunn for the time being. He's going to maybe look into the cutting, which you can do if you're very brave and if you know that the other driver isn't going to drive into the side of you. But Melro decides against it, so uh, we'll carry on there. By the way, Pete Newman at the front, 5.1 seconds ahead of Perry Warburton, who's in second, who is a further 5.7 seconds ahead of Tristan Bodice. Uh, I can tell you that Jason Rowe is on pit road. He's had to have a uh, repair of his car. He's back up and running. Jim Flanagan's upside down. He's just after the cutting, he's gone into the wall. That sent his car over. He was lucky to have, uh, not get collected by the uh, the Kunstvoller car. Ooh, and he's yeah. Um, yeah, he's in the pits now, getting repairs. I remember Jamie Rush were having an issue like that in back in season five of the BSR TC and it ended his pursuit of oh, a second Dan Blake's title. Off as well. Oh, Dan Blake. Skyline. Well, was, Skyline, it catches out another victim here. And Dan Blake, who had started towards the front of the Ooh, grid. Oh, no, it was, it was actually into the S's rather than Skyline, and he was on the racing line as well. And incredibly, nobody else hit him. Wow. He's yes. only just got the car turned round now. <laughs> Andrew Woodhouse is getting a bit of a hurry up because he's got two of the fastest drivers in the series behind him. He's got Adam Hadfield and Pete Harrod. Those two started on the grid in 15th and 16th, and now they're trying to get past car 23. And it was the Magic 23 that was pulled oh! out that got him onto pole position. And Hadfield is through. Let's see if Howard... Oh! oh dear me. Ha Woodhouse was saying no, Look at Michael don't. Hall. They're going to oh. go three wide into turn one here. And Michael Hall's on the prime outside spot. And, uh, oh. well, Whoa. Andrew Woodhouse decided against it. And he's oh, got no. collected by Matt Bunn. And got half turn there. And, uh, well... Woodhouse loses another place there, and he could lose another position, could he? No, there's a big enough gap. Melrose um, through as well, no, yeah. Melrose through, yeah. So there's a big enough gap behind Melrose, though, that he can slot back in. Harrod is still side by side, and just getting past Andrew Whitehead, who's out the pits. And Melrose, no matter what he tries, just cannot get past Matt Bunn at the moment. Similar feeling to what I think Matt Bunn has before the final lap, of course. And, and now the tables are turned. Woodhouse, in a blinking of an eye, goes from third down to about ninth position. How quickly things can change, but uh, yeah, those guys are so quick here on lap seven of the race, about less than five or so minutes to go. 
Well, the, ne the next man who's got the hurry up here is Tristan Bodice, who's in third place. And do you know what? Tristan will not want to give up that podium position because it's uh, not too often that he gets on the podium here and he'll be trying his best to just hold on to that to go through Skyline down into the S's now. It's Hadfield, it's Hall, it's Harrod, it's Bunn and it's Melra all in a queue behind with uh, Andrew Whitehead as well. Lap traffic in, in for good mix as well. So uh, as they go into Forest Elbow now and Hadfield's able to take that tighter line through our Forest Elbow. You get on the power so much earlier if you take that tighter line which carries you the speed all the way down the Comrade Strait. He's also got the slipstream here as well, and you would think it's a matter of time here. Bodice is holding an inside line, but here comes Hadfield around the outside in towards the chase. He might get this done before the chase, Adam. Here we go, through the chase we go. Bodice, and he's clear. Unless Bodice can try and respond. Uh, but yeah, that is Adam Hadfield now through into the podium positions. Andrew Whitehead, of course, has got a brand new car, so he can compete on an equal level with these guys. And that might frustrate uh, Matt Bunn. In fact, he's getting out of the way. He's allowing Matt Bunn and Diego Mauro through. Yeah, he's done the right thing there to get out of the way. Let these guys battle for the positions. He can just finish his race. Uh, but it is Hadfield ahead of Bodice now. And Bodice, he isn't going to give this one up without fight, that's for sure. Melra looking to the outside, possibly in towards Hell Corner. But Bunn had that one covered. Tries to carry that speed through there. And uh, Bunn now trying to use the slipstream of those cars in front to keep ahead of Melro, but Melro right up behind uh, Bun now as they go up Mountain Strait once again. See what he can do into turn two. I think he's just not enough alongside to try and get Matt Bun done just yet. He'll have a go though. Around the outside, there's not the grip out there, Diogo, I'm sorry, and it's not going to work, but uh, yeah, valiant effort, but he might be able to try again at the end of the mountain down the Conrad straight into the chase. Wasn't it Einstein that said if you keep on trying the same thing every t uh, same thing all the time and you, you're stupid if you try the same thing every time and expect a different result? And it's something like that that the quote. Well, anyway, it's it's not worked for him the last three times, so maybe he's, he's got to try and change his tactics up there because Matt Bunn's protecting that line now. He's got to try and make that move elsewhere, which will be very difficult because Bunn has got the slipstream of the cars in front as well. Uh, what's another quote? Oh, oh no, uh, Bodice is trying to get past. Oh, sorry, Bodice about to get past by Michael Hall. I was just going. Oh no, he's that. That's that's an imaginary Oh, oh no. no, Melro. That's Melro. Oh, that's uh, Andrew Whitehead's trying to keep out the way, and Melro's now in the worst possible position because he's got cars bearing down on him, and he's trying to get out the way. Adam Hadfield is stuck in the cut in the dipper. Oh, this is all disaster here, and I think Hadfield's going to have to take a tour here. But Melra has dropped down to 18th now. He was 8th oh. at the start of the lap. In the walls, Max Wright. Uh, he was he's hit the tyre barrier on the entry into Forest Elbow, so he was in 13th at the oh, time. Oh, going three wide down the cover on straight. That's Hull, Harrod and Tristan Bodice. And Bodice holding on to that fourth place. Hall up to third there. And I tell you what, Matt Bunn will be uh, dancing with delight here because he has got a good run here now uh, in terms of points as we're heading in to the final corner here. Body is oh, no. up to the grass, losing control. Bit of opposite lock there. It's almost like using a handbrake in rallying there around the final corner. But that loses in positions to Hall, uh, to Hot Harrod and Matt Bunn as well. As we're heading towards Hell Corner and Harrod trying his best now to make the moves on Michael Hall here for third place. Uh, I'm sure that Kia are already working on the Kia Optima, the RS model. Uh, but um, here comes Pete Harrod. He wants to try and get the position away. Not too many minutes left here in the second race of the evening. Up the inside goes the two-time champion. I think it's better of it. Michael Hall's able to stay in that position. Yeah, we've got a minute and a half left in this one. Pete Newman, 7.1 seconds ahead at the front there, ahead of Perry Warburton. And those are the two cleanest looking Kias at the moment there. Uh, Michael Hall in third place ahead of this gaggle of cars of Pete Harrod, Matt Bunn and Tristan Bodice. John Roberts up into seventh place then, although bouncing that car around the cutting. Andrew Woodhouse is in eighth, but he's got a very battered front end now. He's got a bit of damage at the rear end as well as uh, Andrew Woodhouse. He's got Scott Malcolm for company here. This is a battle for 8th and ninth, with David White in a solid 10th place here. Oh, oh Woodhouse in the wall and uh, that's going to allow uh, Malcolm through and uh, the car's heavily damaged even more now for Andrew Woodhouse and David White and Andrew Whitehead are now bearing down on him. 
And Dwight, of course, who's a lap down at the moment, so that's not for position, but David White is. And David's going to get held up here behind Andrew Woodhouse as they go down the S's in towards Forest Elbow. Woodhouse really struggling to turn that car left, which is a bit of an issue here because the majority of the corners are left-handers, but he's now onto the Conrad straight. You can just relax a bit. Uh, further forward, Pete Harrod is in the slipstream, but he's not close enough to make a move on Michael Hall. David White, though, is making his way past Andrew Woodhouse here down the Conrad straight. Andrew, White, uh, Andrew Whitehead is also trying to... Uh, make a, a make a play make his way through i wouldn't be surprised to see andrew woodhouse take it to the pits but pete newman is coming around so he's gonna go up the last lap here we've got one more lap of this race then pete newman 8.2 seconds ahead of second place perry warburton and then it's Michael Hall, Pete Harrod, Matthew Bunn and Tristan Bodis all together as matt woodhouse comes out the pits right in front of this gaggle of cars yeah this is gonna be interesting uh harrod should be able to get by just on straight line speed alone and he does uh, so the Adam Hadfield might have to wait and let my, uh, Matt Bunn through as well and possibly Tristan Bodice in fact he does so a uh, good there from Adam Hadfield no sorry Mark Woodhouse because his, his teammate Adam Hadfield's out I could tell you what Andrew Woodhouse decided to stay out here so he is dropping places he's down to 11th now Sean Gardner has made it past and uh, the next one behind is Max Wright who is uh, running quicker so Andrew Woodhouse with that heavy damage is just trying to get it to the finish here which is easier said than done and speaking of easier said than done Pete Harrod's under intense pressure from Michael Hall as they head towards McFinnamy Park for the last time over that rise through the left hander try not to use too much of that left hand curb and don't touch the right hand curb if you can help it and now into Brock Skyline down the hill through the S's and uh, well those guys they're still battling it out that one will go to the Conrad straight meanwhile Pete Newman is on the Conrod straight that tells you how far ahead he is than the rest of the field I think Perry Warburton's taken a little bit easier because he's now 9.8 seconds ahead is Pete Newman. So a great run from him. Look at this from Matthew Bunn now on Pete Harrod. Oh, almost on the grass there as they're heading down the Conrad straight. And I believe Harrod is a little bit slower there. And it's going to be Matthew Bunn who will pull up alongside into the chase here. This fast right-hander. Will he make that move stick? And I believe the answer will be yes, he will. So Matthew Bunn up a position, but coming out the final corner now for the final time in this race, Pete Newman takes another win in the club series. Fantastic result for him there as he comes across the line. Perry Warburton coming across the line as well. He had a bit of a nightmare at Monza, but he gets a good result there. Second place for Perry and Michael Hall just finishing ahead of his teammate Matthew Bunn as they go across the line. Pete Harrod just behind them and Tristan Bodice a good result in sixth place place there uh, Scott Malcolm is going to finish just ahead of David White there at the end Max Wright has got a gaggle of cars there Rob Graham who's sat at the back there Ben Gregory uh, Andrew Woodhouse who uh, drops down to 14th at the end of the lap there for Chris Wood who's had a bit of a nightmare in of this weekend in 15th place speaking of people who's had a nightmare and somebody we've not really talked about Piers Pryor Look at him, all the way down in 21st, Adam. It's just not been his week this week. No, it definitely wasn't. Um, yeah, he's going to have to hope that Oran Park provides uh, something better for him. And he'll hope he can recapture that form of last season where he was always on the pole positions. In uh, the opening races of the evening, helps contribute towards his championship effort there. But yeah, not at all going at all well for him here at Bathurst. But Pete, uh, last, time around, uh, last time we were at Bathurst, Back in season two, Pete Harrod managed to win here by 8.7 seconds. Well, Pete Newman managed to eclipse that, beating Perry Warburton by 9.3 seconds in the end. Dominant showing from him. Yeah, certainly. We're just waiting for the last few to come across the line. Ian Roskell's just coming into uh, Murray's corner. Uh, now, uh, Chris Sherber. I think the last of the lead lap runners is Jim Flanagan. And he's just coming down the Conrad straight. So it is a long lap here. And uh, it is really difficult to... Uh, to keep on that lead lap as well. In fact, yeah. no, he's a lap down, actually, isn't he, on, on this race? So, uh, is Jim? No, no, he is just coming through to uh, to finish the race. He'll head into uh, Murray's Corner for the last time. And, yeah, that'll be down in, I believe, 26th place for Jim as he comes across the line now. 
So that will be the last of the runners. Uh, 25th, sorry, he ended up finishing. David South dropped down a lap then on the last lap. So, uh, yeah, Adam, why don't you take us through then the uh, the finishing results there? Yeah, so Pete Newman takes the win with Perry Warburton. Yeah, 9.3 seconds behind in the end. Michael Hall and Matt Bunn, the two CQR drivers, working their way through from 17th and 19th to 3rd and 4th, respectively. Pete Harris, two-time champion in 15th, in, from 15th, 16th to 5th. Tristan Bonnis finished in 6th place in the end after being in the podium for the majority of the race. John Roberts in 7th, 8th for Scott Malcolm, 9th David White and 10th Sean Gardner. Max Wright 11th, 12th Rob Graham after starting in 33rd place. 13th for Ben Gregory, 14th for the pole sitter Andrew Woodhouse. Uh, 15th for Chris Wood, Neil Rocks in 16th. 17th floor Murray, Diogo Melro managed to continue despite that collision with Adam Hadfield in the S's and finished in 18th place. 19th Dan Blake after starting in 4th and 20th for Jason Rowe. Piers Pryor in 21st, 22nd Ian Roskell, 23rd Chris Sherbin, Stephen Baxter in 24th, Jim Flanagan in 25th and then the cars one lap down or more. Uh, David South in 26th, Clinton, Clinton Bell also a lap down. Same for Mark Woodhouse and also Andrew Whitehead in 29th. Three laps down Adam Hadfield, five laps down James Leggett. Six laps down for Dale Green, Linton Swaby also eight laps down and Sam Reed and Jerome Kaiser also out on the opening lap of the race. Yep, so uh, that is the results. I'm just having a look back at what happened in that instant with Diogo. And it was actually Andrew Woodhouse who got into the back of Diogo there because of everybody checking up uh, with the Adam Hadfield spinning on his own. So it was Andrew Woodhouse. Uh, a little bit of a slap wrist there for uh, Mr. Woodhouse there, I'm afraid. Uh, ended up in the back of Diogo. So that's who turned Diogo Melro around. Uh, but yeah, that was the end results there. Uh, for us uh, and everybody's been a little bit shy here at the moment um, I will just see um, we have had points updated for the first race but not the second race we'll try and bring you the top three uh, when that does happen but Adam just that uh, you know that ra round that was an opportunity for people to pick up some good points here because there were a lot of people who did not finish that race. I mean, there was the um, from 30th onwards did not finish that race. So people who maybe don't normally score some good points, that opportunity of finishing higher up. People like uh, John Roberts, uh, Tristan Bodice, uh, David White, enough a good result for him. You know, he's had a really good, strong week this week as David. Yeah, it's been a good week for the Tier 2 drivers, definitely. Perry Warburton getting that second place for Team Dial-Up. Uh, other tier 2 drivers, he said, like Tristan Bodice. Uh, is John Roberts a tier 2 driver as well? I think he might be tier 1, but yeah, uh, Scott Malcolm, tier 2 driver, definitely. And uh, David Weiss and yeah, Sean Gardner as well. So some much needed points picked up for those guys in FSU of the tier 2 championship. And uh, they'll, they'll be very happy about that. Well, what we'll do is, uh, first of all, we will bring in uh, one driver for a chat, and it was a man who finished in second place. Adam, why don't you take it away with Matt Bunn, second place in race one and fourth place in race two? Yeah, well, Matt Bunn, second place in race one. However, for a brief moment, you had the lead there. Yeah, hi, guys. Uh, yeah, really good first race. Uh, I'm sweating out after that first race. Uh, I was so close to... Diogo's bumpers up through the mountain I seem to have been a bit quicker um, tried a few times going into that fast right um, before the chicane and uh, yeah he just he just nabbed me on the inside every time um, but yeah he did really well to sort of defend me off and then the second race you know we both sort of every time I looked in my rear view I could see Diogo just following me through the pack and I was getting more and more nervous and then obviously that incident happened. I actually thought someone pulled that in front of him, but I, I just watched the the broadcast back and was hear the uh, someone. He got rear-ended, so uh, it's a real shame actually because it's going to affect the the championship and it's been real close to me and Diogo. So, but all, all round we've done really well. CQR a couple of good finishes. So, At the final lap in race one, you gave uh, Melrose just a bit of a nudge at the back into Forest Elbow. Were you letting the letting him have the position back on the exit of the chicane? In race one, yeah, yeah, um, yeah I, I didn't. I felt really bad for that. <laughs> I was just waiting for the right time because obviously I had my teammate behind me, and I, I didn't want to affect Mike's race. And he had someone behind him, so I didn't want him to get overtaken. So I just let him know over comms, and we managed to sort of sort it out and let him through. Yeah, just finishing ahead of uh, your teammate in the end. Next week, then Oran Park. Have you had much practice around there? It's a circuit that doesn't get often used. 
Uh, I've done a few hours on it with Ash Blake. We uh, downloaded it one night, had a little play with it, and it's actually a really, really good, fun track. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting. As, as you say, a lot of people probably haven't raced there before, so hopefully everyone gets some practice in. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. Whereabouts would you say the overtaking spots are there? Probably the end of the end of the front straight going into that quick uh, double left-hander? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, the rest is fairly tight. A lot of, lot of corners. Are th yeah, it's going to be a difficult one for, for overtakes. Oh, well, thanks for talking to us, Matt. A second place in race one and a nearly a podium in race two. Uh, if we see the championship standings are updated, we'll see whereabouts uh, you are. Are they updated, Paul? Yeah, they are updated and uh, good news. You're in the lead. Way. 14 <laughs> point advantage. Nice. Well, yeah, best of luck at, um, at Oran Park next week, and hopefully we'll be pulling you in here for another quick word at next week. Yeah, nice one, guys. That uh, fun there. Yeah, I, 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 I did see Perry Warburton in there earlier in the interview room, but he's disappeared, so um, <laughs> obviously he yeah, doesn't want to talk to us now after all. Uh, but, okay, yeah, let, let's discuss the. quickly just chat about the uh, championship standings. Um, of course, it is um, bringing in drop scores and things like that. Um, and well, the top three, Matt Bunn, as you say, 14 points ahead of Diogo Melrose. That second race, really a bit of a disaster for Diogo uh, there. And Michael Hall, third place, only 30 points off the lead. One mover there that's uh, in there is um, Ben Gregory as well, though. He's just outside that top three. And Piers Pryor, even after a disastrous week this week, Still within the shout here of the championship. Yeah, and also what's interesting was going into this race meeting, the top 10 were separated by about 165 points or so, and now that now is narrowed down to only the top six. We did say at the top of the broadcast that this could be a season defining race meeting, and it's just closed up a bit there now with only six drivers uh, being pretty close to each other. But Oran Park next week uh, probably could see the same again. It's, as uh, Matt Bunn was saying, it's a very difficult racetrack. Well, uh, before we discuss the Tier 2 standings, let's speak to a Tier 2 driver, Perry Warburton. Well done, second place in that one. Um, you're a bit on your own in that race, really. Just talk us through how that went for you this week. Yeah, it was um, it was a, a strange race, really. I was, I was I was on my own for quite a while. Um, got a good start, reasonable start. Andrew was very kind to me after we'd got that nice uh, grid position to the, at the start of the race. Um, but after that, really, you know, like you say, I was completely on my own. I was just uh, trying to keep it uh, between the walls all the time. Uh, well, th this is it. You know, the, it's it, no normally at most tracks you can just sort of let your concentration go for uh, a few moments, and uh, you, you know you're pretty much fine. But around here, even though you're on your own, you've really got to keep that focus up for the full race, haven't you? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, I, I did. I was I was going okay in the first race, but you know, on top of the mountain, got a bit out of shape and ended up uh, into in, in one of the walls there. You know, so it, that ruined my race for the first uh, and the first race. But uh, I thought, you know, I practiced a little bit in in, in midweek and I sort of got you know half decent pace. You know, obviously not nowhere near the front with the, the fast guys like you know, but I thought it might have been on for a, a you know. A better the result than usual, so yeah, it was uh, it was good to it was good to good to finish in, in me only my second second place in the whole of the all of the, the championships. And well, look at you know look at the tier two standings. That's moved you up to uh, seventh place in the standings. You're only 116 oh. points behind the leader, so you could still actually uh, get the job done here and uh, get that tier two championship. You know, are, uh, are you thinking about that, or is it just a case of really. take it as you go along? Not really. Look, I'm the oldest guy in the field, I think. So you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm just making the most of it. I'm just I just enjoy doing it. You know, so. Uh, I'm just here for the fun of it, really, you know. And if uh, if a result comes my way, then great. But it must be good. Uh, must be good to have such a, a better season compared to last season for the team as well. I mean, the team's up there in ninth place, whereas last season it was a complete disaster for you at the team. So uh, improvements yeah. being made there. Yeah, it was dire last season. Absolutely dire. Uh, so yeah, we're we're having a better season, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm glad that we're uh, we're up there a little bit a bit higher than we were last season for sure. Um, well, mostly down to mostly down to uh, one of your uh, 
commentary colleagues. Oh, don't, don't, sta- don't start, you'll give him a big head. Um, oh. <laughs> um, just going in quickly, next week, Oran Park, have you had a chance to, to run around there at all? Because it's a track that's rarely used in any series. I haven't even got the track yet. <laughs> So that'll be a no then, okay. That'll be a no, that's a definite no. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, well before you go off, anyone you give, want to give a quick mention to before uh, we we'll let you go? Yeah, just just Andrew uh, for coming into the team a couple of seasons back and uh, helping us out tremendously. Uh, ben, my son. Uh, I'll publicly apologise now for taking him out in, uh, in a couple of weeks ago at um, Mataggy, I think it was, yeah. So, but... No, and thanks to everybody, you know, that's involved in running the series, uh, Matt and all the admins, you know, I, I don't know, you know, who, who's going on behind the scenes, but massive thanks to everybody and massive thanks to you guys as well. Well, thanks a lot for joining us and, and well done on the second place there, Perry. Thank you. Okay, so uh, that was Perry Warburton there from Team Dial-Up, and just quickly mention the Tier 2 standings. I'm just looking at this here. First is Scott Malcolm, ahead of Andrew Woodhouse, is in second, 52 points behind. But then the battle for third is quite interesting here, uh, Adam, because Max Wright, Tristan Bodice, and Stuart McFadden are all together there. There's only five points between them. And, in fact, Tristan Bodice and Stuart McFadden are on the exact same points as well. Yeah, uh, 73 points back is Max Wright, and yeah, Bodice and Stuart McFadden, 78 points behind the leader, uh, their nose to tail there. And also on the same amount of points are Jason Rowe and Mark Woodhouse, they're in ninth position in the uh, Tier 2 standings as well. So uh, the top 10 there, separated by 144 points, so that, that championship looks like it's going to look set, it's going to rumble on into next week. Yeah, it certainly is going to rumble on there. So uh, next week, Oran Park then, uh, a track that uh, not too many of these drivers will be familiar with. So uh, definitely going to produce some interesting racing because it's a tight, twisty course. Limited overtaking opportunities there as well. So uh, really, it's all about getting that qualifying lap right to start off with. But that's next week. So, uh, well, congratulations to the two winners there, Diogo Melro and Pete Newman, for this week uh, from rounds 9 and 10 of the Club Series. Season 5, of course, of the Club Series here on Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live. From myself, Paul Smith, from Adam Bath, and from Samula Kumar on the cameras, it's good night. <laughs>